Hello friends, it's Intuitive Renee here bringing you your weekly reading. I was going to say tarot reading, but I can't use just that word because there's a lot more than tarot taking place here. <laughs> so bringing you your weekly reading. This is the week of the 20th to the 26th of March 2022. I have tried to put all the decks that I'm going to be using today on camera um, on the table here to sort of you through exactly you know what's going on here so if this is i see that one needs to come down a bit if this is the first time that you are um joining in or watching weekend reading welcome and for those of you who have who are familiar with this you will understand the chaos that is right here in front of us so basically the week ahead reading what i try and give you in this particular reading is a little bit of everything okay a little bit of individual guidance a little bit of um you know collective guidance and a little bit of other kinds of inspiration to to just help you navigate the seven days so we're breaking life down into seven day periods and we work from sunday to saturday just so that you've got a bit of time on the sunday to sort of get a an idea of what's coming up for you so that you can best prepare yourself so that you can navigate and handle the monday to saturday which to me are the most important sundays is for me is very much a chill day a relaxed day a take it easy day but it's also a day of being a little bit retrospective looking at the week on but then also being a little bit where we're looking ahead as to what's coming up for you so the idea behind this reading is to give you tools to give you information to give you insight to navigate that as best as possible um we start off with our week ahead reading we start off with the theme and the theme comes from these two over there which is from the word of the year oracle um so the theme gives us a word from each of those which we put together and i'm also going to take from this particular oracle deck here which is the believe in your own magic oracle beautiful 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 deck so the theme for the week comes from those three decks together although that's actually one deck once we've done the theme for the week ahead, we then go into doing the animal energy for the week. And I'm sticking with the um, Colette Baron Reed Spirit Animal Oracle. And then we do a crystal for the week ahead and sticking with Colette Baron Reed Crystal Spirit Oracle. So we've got her Animal Spirit Oracle and her Crystal Spirit Oracle that I am working with again this week to give us animal energy and we can take the characteristics and the information that we know about the animal and incorporate it into our own self, especially when dealing with challenges. I find the animal energy, animal totem energy, very powerful for that. When you're facing a challenge, when you're facing a, you know, something that you're uncertain about, you let the properties or the characteristics of the animal really help you and the crystal as well crystal we can use for healing we can use for manifestation we can use for just general guidance as well so we do those then once we've done our theme once we've done the animal and once we've done the crystal we then move into what i call the elemental readings where i do a reading for each sign of the zodiac but i group them into the zodiac elementals being fire earth air and water and for that i'm going to use the teddy tarot this week because i am just so in love with teddy tarot it is the cutest thing ever um so teddy tarot we're going to use for our week ahead element uh, um, zodiac readings all right then once we're done with that we move on to our q a with spirit which again every week when i look at the um the stats around the video watch time it's always the q a that seems to be the most popular so here are our q's and here are our a's <laughs> so this is the questions deck it is just a deck full of questions and i have since come up with another many few questions that i'm going to be adding to this deck within the next while as soon as i have some time to do so so the questions deck is growing which is going to be great and i am using the little buddha tarot this week to answer our questions from spirit so that's going to be our final portion then here in the middle i have got two very interesting very amazing decks and as i'm looking at them on camera now i realize that their backs i don't want to say are similar but they've both got that kind of eye in the middle all right they come from completely different creators but these two 
I'm going to do a quite an in-depth reading for my um, motivated and activated channel members on my YouTube memberships. So if you are a channel member, if you are on that level, that tier of the memberships, please do stick around for the end for an extended reading using these two decks. And these two decks, is this is the pocket edition. I'll show you. The pocket edition of the dreams of Gaia. I do have the full size as well. Beautiful, beautiful deck. And this little one, this little one is Mildred Payne's pocket edition oracle. So we've got Mildred Payne's oracle and we have got the dreams of Gaia tarot. And I'm going to use those for an extended reading for my channel members. So that's all the cards. That's everything that's on the table here. So we're going to start off with the theme, but I need to clean up first <laughs> so that we have some space because this is just a little bit crazy. So I'm going to just clear the desk, move them around out of camera shot, and then we're going to get started with the theme. Okay, so as you can see, I've just moved, I've moved them all just out of camera shot, just so that the working space looks clean, neat and tidy. Friends, let's get our theme for the week ahead, starting with our word of the year oracle. So just giving this little deck a shuffle and we do the green and then we do the orange and we're looking for a single card from each pile that has a single word on that we combine into our word our, our theme for the week ahead. And this is the week of the 20th to the 26th of March, 2022. I'm looking for a single card from there. I'm going to take that one. I do apologize for the glare, but just bear with me for a second. Gosh, running out of space. <laughs> and we do the same here. Give it just a little shuffle, looking for a single card. Okay, and let's see which one I want to take. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, let's have a look and see what is our theme for the week ahead. So the green first, magical. I'm loving magical for the week ahead. Oh, magical confidence. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that combination, actually. So immediately when I read Magical Confidence, what comes to me is the fact that we are going to believe in ourselves and that we're not going to be afraid to speak up. We're not going to be afraid to engage and interact in whichever way we need to. But we're also going to almost, if I can say, trust and believe in ourselves and this magic energy around us that's going to help guide us on our journey for the week ahead. I'm just going to shuffle the oracle while I'm chatting. So magical confidence to me is about understanding that it's okay to speak out, it's okay to act out, it's okay to engage and interact and participate, but it, there's this, this part of us that's going to believe or, or almost have confidence in this unconscious magical energy around us that's going to be guiding us and driving us forward and giving us this 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 inner confidence that maybe we've been lacking that maybe we've been needing over the last while so magical confidence for the weekend says you know what not too many problems not too many challenges and those that do come about are going to be easy for us to overcome and easy for us to navigate because we have this unconscious magical energy around us that's going to guide us whenever we need it so i have taken a single card from the believe in your own magic oracle how amazing is that actually I want to show you the deck the box i should say believe in your own. i mean like i said guys i can't make this stuff up <laughs> i can't make this stuff up you saw me shuffle and choosing a card so believe in your own magic oracle and we have got a deck we all a card so let's turn it over and see what message is coming through connecting with our theme for the week of magical confidence nostalgia focus on the here and the now so you know what this is almost uh, i want to say to you almost a warning okay and it's a warning to not get stuck in nostalgia what is nostalgia nostalgia is thinking about the past comparing the now to the past but reminiscing and thinking and if we look at the particular artwork here so here we have two girlfriends who are enjoying a cup of coffee you can see how engaged she is you can see how she's chatting and the hands are going and she's doing everything this must be me um, <laughs> the hands are going and she's chatting and she's talking up a storm her friend on the other hand she looks like she's not really focused. She looks like she's not really engaging and she's not really paying attention. And if you look at the the, the thought cloud above her, I mean, you know, she's, she's lost in thought. She's not focusing on the here and the now. Now, 
the magical confidence in in this particular instance magical confidence seems to be sitting here it doesn't seem to be sitting there she's maybe feeling like maybe she's not actually interested in what her friend's saying maybe she has um problems or maybe she's got got other issues but she doesn't have confidence to be able to say to a friend listen uh, I'm, I'm really interested in what you're saying, but right now I'm a bit distracted because I'm thinking about this and she's got the nostalgia going on. So magical confidence is telling you that, you know, if you're not really feeling it, if you're not really uh, um, uh, feeling whatever your friend is saying, or whatever, have the confidence to say so. Have the confidence to say to your friend, you know, what? I, um, I really want to know what you're saying. I really want to hear what you're saying, but right now this is where I'm at. So we Need to open channels of communication this is where i'm going with this friends is we need to open channels of communication we need to be able to confidently and clearly express ourselves without worrying about how our friend is going to react or think because maybe when we find um our magical confidence and we're able to express ourselves suddenly this relationship isn't just a one-sided relationship but it becomes a partnership it becomes something connected to the both of you I am also suddenly seeing um, it is card number 33, which is, of course, a master number when it comes to numerology. And it is also about the teaching. It's about the learning. It's about the understanding. But we cannot have that if we're not focusing on confidence, self-confidence, not trying to force confidence, but just allowing our own natural magical essence to come out in our interactions, in our communications and in our conversations that we have with friends. All right. I do think, you know what, I love nostalgia. I love having those moments of, you know, reminiscing and thinking back. And especially as a parent, we do this with our children and we do this with our lives. You know, think back five years, 10 years, pre-COVID, you know, all of these things. We think back to what we thought was a simpler, happier time. And we do that comparison between the then and the now. And sometimes we wish we could go back to that time. And, you know, when we spend too much time there, we actually forget to be present we actually forget to be in the here and the now and i am going to say to you that living in the past reminiscing contemplating and thinking about things from the past is a i'm going to call it a subconscious psychological excuse to not be present to not be in the here and the now because you're afraid that you can't you're afraid that you're not capable you're afraid that you're going to mess it up so we need to have magical confidence to be present to be here and now and to recognize that we do have something to contribute and we do have something to share awesome right so friends theme for the week is done we are now going to move on to our animal energy for the week ahead so what animal energy wants to work with us for the week ahead what animal characteristics and properties and just understandings want to work with us for the week ahead what animal characteristics can we lean on can we utilize and can we incorporate into our daily lives to make our daily lives better easier and to give us a little bit more magical confidence okay so the deck has been shuffled and i am going to take that card over there right let's put the deck away somewhere where i can find space on the table <laughs> right let's have a look and see what is our animal energy for the week oh look at that so we've got card 39 and it is the moth spirit with its key phrase of surrender now now I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of moths. I love my butterflies. <laughs> I love my butterflies, but moths, not so much. But the spiritual message of moths, I mean, what do moths do? Moths generally fly to the light, fly toward the light. It's the only thing that they're interested in. It's the only thing that's of relevance or significance to them is flying to the light. And sometimes they don't realize that the light that they're flying to is a light that's not actually what they think it is. For example, the lights outside your kitchen door um, <laughs> you know so they fly to the light and then they fly around and around and around the light but it's not the light that they imagined or the light that they determined or, or wanted okay um but that's what moths do even if it means the death of them even if it brings about the end of their existence that is their their purpose and their function and that is what they are focusing on is working towards that but you know 
to their own detriment sometimes, isn't it? And considering our theme for the week of magical confidence, considering our theme of nostalgia and focusing on the here and the now, we need to make sure that surrendering, yes, but not surrendering to the point where we actually lose our function or our way. So we need to recognize that we are all moving towards the same thing. We're all actually wanting the same thing. We're all guided by the same thing. And we all want to be closer to the light, more in the light, etc. But we need to make sure that we're not doing it to our own detriment. So whatever your whatever your week is about, just if you find yourself starting to stress, if you find yourself starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, or if you find yourself starting to spend too much time in nostalgia, then ask yourself, what are you obsessing about? What are you focusing on? What is driving you? What is this action that you keep doing over and over and over repetitively, even though it's not bringing you closer to where you want to be, what you want to be, or who you want to be? So Moth Spirit with Surrender, I think it's surrender is surrendering, stopping the repetitive, obsessive behavior that's not actually helping you achieve the goals that you wanted for yourself. Okay, so it's not surrendering as in giving up, it's just changing our behavior, and that's what nostalgia is as well. It's just about changing our focus and changing our behavior to be more relevant and appropriate to the situation or the circumstance. And you know what, friends? Medical confidence comes about when we stop self sabotage cause for effect. When we stop self sabotage, when we stop hurting ourselves, when we stop flying into street lamps continuously, repetitively for no purpose. That is magical confidence because suddenly you're going to feel more capable. You're going to feel more alive and more in tune with yourself and your circumstances. Good. Animal energy of the week, moth spirit. Let's now move into our crystal energy for the week. So we're going to give the cards a little bit of a shuffle. We're looking for a single card being a crystal energy element that we can work with for the week ahead to guide us through our trials and tribulations, to help us stay on our focused path and to help us achieve our objectives and to grow our magical confidence. How's that? Love it. Okay, cards are shuffled and we're going to grab one over there. Okay, I'm going to put the cards out of the way. Let's have a look and see what crystal energy are we working with this week. Oh, Amber, love it. So, you know, Amber is, first of all, it's such a beautiful orange, and I'm suddenly noticing all that orange over there as well. But Amber, Amber is actually a product that, um, I want to say like that glue that comes out of a tree, and then it crystallizes and it goes hard and it becomes Amber. Um, I love the greens that we have here, green and orange. Okay, and we've got the green and orange over there. I am going to just look in the guidebook. Um, and you know what? Look at this. This is card 33. That was card 39. Nine is a product of three. And here we've got card three. So this is actually <laughs> a little bit freaky, friends, because... Um, to share a secret with you, don't tell anybody, I am celebrating a birthday this week, and my birthday is on the 23 of the three, so all these threes that are coming through, it's a little bit, wow, little bit interesting indeed, so let's have a look and see what Amber's message is, I'm taking all of this for myself, I'm not going to share with you guys this week, <laughs> of course, all right, so essential meaning of Amber, just to see in the little guidebook here. Healing family patterns, releasing karma, persevering the wisdom gained by the lessons of the past. And there brings our nostalgia, and there brings our magical confidence and changing behaviors. I love this. I Look how everything is tying in. Look how everything is connecting with each other. I know I'm going to get a bit of a glare there, but I want to just try and fit Amber into that slot over there. So Amber, very interesting card. The essential meaning again is healing family patterns. You know, and family patterns is moth energy here because it's that repetitive, continuous action that actually doesn't feed into any outcome or into any relevant, appropriate outcome. Okay, so that's the family patterns that we're healing with the Amber energy, releasing karma 
and persevering the wisdom gained by the lessons of the past. And that is what's going to give you the magical confidence that we need for the week ahead. So again, I don't have a piece of amber. Um, I wish I did, but I don't have a piece of amber. But we can use the just the thought of it to bring it into your heart space and to hold it close to you. You could Google and get a picture of it, or you could just use this one. Let me actually do that in case any of you want to take a screenshot now so that you have an image of the amber that you can work with for the week. You're welcome to do that as well. Um, actually, I know all of these cards have the little face, the little spirit energy within the crystal, but that one to me looks so Buddha-like. I don't know if that's just my, my eyes, my mind, but to me it looks Buddha-like with the third eye illuminated, which I think is just so amazing. Third eye illuminated talks to the fact that we now have understanding of our behaviors and understanding of our actions, which again comes from this whole nostalgia, focusing on the here and now and finding our magical confidence. Loving this reading so far for the weekend. All right, friends, next on the agenda. Next on the agenda, we're bringing out Teddy Tarot. I mean, how gorgeous is Teddy Tarot? So this is the elemental portion of the, the, the reading. And I just, okay, so with the, are my cards upside down? No, that, um, with the elemental portions. So I do a reading for each sign of the zodiac, but categorized by the elements. And the elements that we work with is the fire, earth, air, and water. So the fire signs are our Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So all other Aries, out there, happy birthday because uh, this is your week. This is the beginning of Aries season. Happy birthday to you. So Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius is the fire energies. Earth signs being Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Air signs being Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And our water signs being Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So once you know what your sign is, your element is, grouping, then you just watch that portion of the reading to get your specific personalized reading for the week ahead. Right. Okay, so we're now going to start with our fire signs. Fire signs, again, just to repeat, Aries, Leo, and Sag. Okay, so the cards are shuffled. I'm going to cut the deck over there. Actually, I want to cut a little bit more for some reason. Okay, cards are cut. So Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The first card we have for you is Temperance. And the second card we have for you is the Queen of Cups. So if we look at Temperance, she is standing one foot on the earth and one foot in the water. She is also sharing and finding equal balance between her liquid that she has within her jugs. She has got her wings on. She is of spirit. She is a beautiful, peaceful, tranquil energy. But all she's trying to do is bring balance into the world. And I think this is saying to us, fire signs, that we need to make sure that whatever we're doing this week, whatever our activity is, whatever our thing is this week, we need to make sure that it is bringing balance into our world. If there is anything happening which is immediately causing an imbalance, we need to stop, okay? Because again, moth, we need to stop, we need to time out, and we need to say, why don't I have balance? What do I need to do to bring that balance into my world and into our existence right here and right now? And then we have the Queen of Cups energy as well. Look at her, she's gorgeous. She is wearing her best dress. She's in the water, whether she's the side of her castle or that side of her castle. You know, she is in the suit of water. She is in the suit of emotions. She cares about people. She just wants everybody to be happy. She is nurturing and loving, but she's also trusting her intuition. She's very connected to herself, very connected to her own needs, wants, and desires. So fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, this is spirit saying to you for this week, as much as you are caring about other people and as much as you are thinking and always wanting to give, be, and, and supply to other people, you need to make sure that everything that you do is bringing balance into your world. If you're focusing on other people too much, you're creating an imbalance. So we need to bring it all back to the things that matter. We need to bring it back to the things that are relevant and significant and not allow ourselves to create an imbalance in our worlds in everything that we're doing. So temperance is the key for all of us 
fire signs, we need to have the balance, even though we care so much about other people. And even though we want what's best for them, we need to make sure that we keep in balanced energy with everything that we do. Good. That's your week ahead. Okay, so they are going to live over there. We're now moving on to earth signs and our earth signs being Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Very practical earth signs, very down to earth earth signs. <laughs> Let's have a look. Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Okay, cards are shuffled, cutting the deck over there. Earth signs, we have got, oh lovely, the full card zero and oh, Ace of Pentacles. Oh, this is very interesting earth signs. So these two cards together make such a good pairing because they are both about beginnings. They are both about new opportunities. But you know what? There, there's no limits. There's no restrictions with either of these two. The full card, he is so enthusiastic and he is so eager and he's got not a care in the world. He doesn't worry about anything. He just trusts that everything's going to work out as it needs to. He's got this magical confidence, okay? Our full absolutely carries that magical confidence. Our Marvel's the, the one who's saying, you know what, I don't actually have to have a plan. I don't actually have to know what's happening tomorrow or the next day because I'll figure it out when I get there. He's got that, I want to say, carefree, laid back kind of attitude, but it's not really carefree and laid back. It's just magical confidence. So this is absolute confirmation for you, Earth Signs, that this is where you need to be this week. You need to be so focused on magical confidence and not allow yourself to get caught up in any stress, any anxiety, any panic, just know that it's all going to work out. And with our Ace of Pentacles here, this talks about new opportunities for growth, new opportunities for income, and new opportunities to create and to manifest anything that your heart desires. So I'm a little bit jealous because, you know, look at the sky. The skyline is the same. We've got the same kind of water uh, um horizon levels here we've got the sun facing this way we've got shadows coming this side and both of these cards have just got this this magical element of creation of manifestation of happiness but i am going to say to you earth signs taurus virgo capricorn just be very mindful of the things that you're thinking feeling and the stuff the subconscious okay just be very mindful of your subconscious we don't want to be arrogant we don't want to be like so super confident that actually we're we're just being a moth and you know flying into flames and causing our own self-destruction we need to reel it in ever so slightly so we don't want to be so super confident so magically confident that we now become slightly arrogant but we have to recognize that this is a week of new beginnings that this is a week of opportunities as long as you trust as long as you go without overthinking it and without too much self doubt and if you can do that earth signs i think you're going to have an amazing 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 week good like it okay and they're going to live over there just on top right next element we have is the signs of air signs gemini libra and aquarius gemini libra and aquarius are thinkers our thinkers and our communicators let's see what coming through gemini libra and aquarius for the week ahead what's in store for you guys Okay, cards are shuffled, cutting the deck over there. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. We have got the Five of Cups and the World. Right, this is interesting. So the Five of Cups are showing immediately. Don't you just feel so sorry for Teddy? I mean, look at him. Look at the tears in his eyes. Bless his soul. We've got gray skies, you know, so everything's looking a bit sad and, do and gloomy for him. He's, he's clearly upset. What is he upset about? He's upset about these three cups that are broken, they've fallen over, and they have spilt out their contents. And he's feeling like, oh, woe is me. You know, he's feeling a little bit disheartened. He's feeling a little bit upset. He's feeling a little bit like, gosh, what else can go wrong? Okay. But he's focusing on the disappointment instead of actually recognizing that there's, that there's still hope. Okay. So the Five of Cups is the card of disappointment, but it's also the card that says to you, don't get sucked into the disappointment because there's always hope. There's always opportunity. There's always, there's always something else that can be done. But if you allow yourself to get caught up in the disappointment, then you're never going to see the, the other options that are available to you. So 
Air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, don't allow yourself to get disappointed. If something goes wrong, before you get emotional, all right, before you get emotional, let's change our behavior. Let's look at it. Let's compare with the past. Let's look at what's happened before. Let's dig deep and find our magical confidence because the world card, Air signs, is confirming that you will succeed. I mean, this is victory. This is celebration. This is happiness and joy. We have got the elements again. We have got our bear with a victory wreath, and it is a huge victory wreath. I want to say twirling, twirling the batons, and again, it's about the celebration, and it's about the success, and it's about the victory. So air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, things may go wrong. Things may not work out as initially hoped, planned, wanted, needed, but don't focus on what went wrong focus on what you can still do focus on what is still available to you and if you can do that you will succeed even though you've lost more than half even though it looks like you know the the, the majority is gone the little bit that is left is enough to guarantee success but it depends on where your focus is and in moth spirit is straight to that it's about being more mindful selective of the options that you have what's right in front of you and not allowing yourself to get caught up in the chaos okay so it's an interesting week for you if you stay committed if you stay on track it's going to be okay going to be okay okay putting those cards over there and our last elemental is our signs of water water signs being our Cancerians, scorpios and pisces energy so let's have a week ahead for water signs, Cancerians, Scorpios, and Pisces energy. Apparently that card wants to come through first. I will accept it. It felt like it was pick me, pick me, and not just a bad shuffle. I know the difference. <laughs> the cards are shuffled, and I'm just going to grab one over there. Okay, I'm going to put the deck out of the way for now. Let's have a look and see water signs. First card we have is the Seven of Swords. Interesting. And we have the Six of Wands. Okay. So almost, I'm going to say, and I know you might not have watched the Air Signs, but almost similar to Air Signs kind of energy here. So let's look at Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords is, is the opportunist. Okay. I, I like to call the Seven of Swords the, the, the one who, who takes opportunity. You can see by the way he's dressed in this dark cloak that he's put on himself. You can see that it's nighttime and we've got the moon casting some shadows. He's seen all these swords lying around. You can see we've got tents. So people are, are having a party or, you know, sleeping in the tents or whatever. But they've left these swords lying around. And he's cloaked himself up so that he's not seen, so that nobody recognizes him. Almost as a bit of a disguise. And he's now saying, you know what, I'm going to grab the swords. I'm going to take an opportunity that's presented to me that's lying right here in front of me and i'm going to run with it okay i'm going to grab the swords and i'm just going to go what he hasn't thought about is the logistics he hasn't thought about well how you know what is the best way to carry seven swords what is the best way to 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 move them without endangering myself without hurting myself without being seen so he's more focused on his own identity he hasn't really put much planning or strategy into his actions so that is essentially the meaning of the card the card is saying to you that you know sometimes we we jump so quickly at an opportunity that we don't really think it through and because we haven't thought it through we we stand a chance of getting caught we stand a chance of failing and we stand a chance of leaving some behind that maybe we shouldn't or maybe you know we should be finding a way of bringing them so we don't know his thoughts we don't know if he's planning to to do a couple of trips to make sure that he doesn't or if he's been seen if maybe somebody's seen him which is why he's running away but it's message to me and i you know me the ever optimist i'm always trying to find a positive seven of swords to me is before you rush into anything take a minute to think about it take a minute to strategize take a minute to plan take a minute to actually take a pen and paper and say right this is the opportunity what is the best way to handle it to do it to navigate it to ensure that i get the best or the most out of it and the reason why i'm taking such a positive spin on that particular card because what i haven't maybe mentioned i, I forget if i mentioned it or not but what we haven't mentioned here is the fact that these swords don't belong to 
okay? So in essence, he is stealing. In essence, he is taking something that doesn't belong to him. But what he's doing is he's grabbing an opportunity, okay? But because he hasn't put much thought into it, because he hasn't planned, the likelihood of him succeeding or getting away with it becomes quite remote. But connected to it now, your second card, water signs, Cancerians, Scorpio, and Pisces, we have got here is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is the victory card. I mean, here he's even got his little victory wreath. He's coming into town. You can see there's a crowd of teddy bears that have come out to, to greet him, to celebrate him, and to acknowledge him. He's come back into town after success, okay? After success. And everybody is happy to see him. Everybody is acknowledging his accomplishment and what he has achieved. So this is not encouraging you to steal. <laughs> no, water signs, you're not allowed to do that. But what it is encouraging you to do is to strategize to plan so that you can take advantage of opportunities as they are presented to you. Because if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a system, you're not going to have success. But it does look like it turns out well for you as long as there's a plan, okay? Because otherwise you're going to be the moth and you're just going to be flying towards that flame until such time as the flame catches you and you're on fire, okay? So learn, strategize, and come up with plans before jumping in to action. All right. Now, the part of the reading <laughs> that is the most popular, and that is our Q&A with Spirit. So I have the cues in my hand, the questions. Let's give it a shuffle. And we're asking Spirit for a question that we are either contemplating subconsciously, consciously, however, something that maybe we should be contemplating, something that we should be thinking about. Just something thought-provoking um, and something to possibly even help us navigate the challenges and the perils of life at the moment. So what is a question that we need to, to know, that we need to question, that we need answers to, and something that Spirit is prepared to give us answers to? Okay, this is an interesting one. I am now out of space again. So the question, how can I always change the eyes to we? can we best serve others with our work so you know and again it doesn't matter what your job is whether you're corporate whether you're government whether you're service whether you're self-employed whether you're a teacher whether you're a contractor whether you're a construction worker a driver um it doesn't matter what your work is okay how can we best serve others with our work you know and i think what's happening in our society at the moment on a global level is we're also focused on others we're also focused on what other people are doing and why other people are doing that and you know why are they doing it that way and not this way you know we, we've all got our opinions on what other people are doing and i think we've all sort of forgotten the self now, it's interesting, when I look at all of this across the top here, our theme for the week ahead, our animal totem, our crystal energy, what comes through so much is about the person, is about the individual, about you individually. So I'm actually not surprised that a question like this has come up for us, because how can we best serve others with our work? So I do have my little Buddha tarot, which I'm shuffling while we, we talk about the question. Um, so it's still about serving others. It's still about being mindful of our colleagues, our family, our friends, strangers, you know, the people that we see at the robots, the people that we see at the supermarket, the people that we see online, you know, whatever, whatever the circumstance may be. We are all so focused on other people. We all wanna help, we all wanna guide, we all wanna be there for other people but we're so worried about what other people are doing and why they're doing things a certain way um that we may be not so much focused on our own activities and our own behaviors and our own um, actions so i think this is a, a way for us to become a little bit more mindful of who we are what we are what we're doing how we're doing it why we're doing it um etc so question how can I, how can we best serve others with the work that we're doing at the moment? Okay, so let's see what comes through. All right, so I think the cards are sufficiently shuffled. Cutting the deck over there. 
Card number one, Temperance. Temperance came through with the Aries reading. We have the Knight of Wands. Oh, and we have the beautiful star. Love this reading. I love the colors of this deck too. So bright and so beautiful. Okay. So how can we best serve others with our work? Temperance is, again, it's a reminder for balance. Temperance is, is, is saying to you that, yes, there's a lot of things that you want to do. There's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of things you should be doing. But the most important thing that you need to be focusing on is bringing balance to your life and to lives of others so as long as your work is not throwing things out of balance as long as your work is constantly bringing that element of balance to others everything's going to work out perfectly the knight of wands that we have over here i mean i love our little little lion's face he almost looks quite unimpressed while our knight is saying oh, charge our knight is so excited but our little <laughs> our little lion he's like you know i'm doing it i don't want it <laughs> i love it it's so cute um so the knight of wands is saying that you know maybe this is what we do maybe we're so quick to jump we're so quick to respond we're so quick to jump into action that we're not really giving much thought to what to when to how and again to the balance when somebody says hey i need i want can you we're like we feel as if we have to do it immediately you know and i think we a lot of a lot of people i'm going to say of a certain age <laughs> um people who who were in the the working world pre-email you know <laughs> we, we things were a lot slower things were a lot more um uh, what what's the word i'm looking for more purposeful okay now with email there's this immediate kind of well the, the, this kind of feeling of you need to respond immediately you need to react quicker you need to do more faster so it puts pressure on everybody to to be available to be quicker in your responses instead of actually taking time to think about it and when i look at the three cards that we've got here in answer to the question also taking into account our theme i do think this is spirit saying we need to be more mindful instead of being so quick to react and so quick to respond and so quick to do maybe we need to actually take a minute and to allow you know nostalgia is telling you think even though it says focus on the here and now but it's telling you to take that minute take that minute to think take that minute to respond take that minute to maybe fully understand the question before we jump into action we've got two major arcana cards here in our little three card reading that we have temperance is about balance and the star card is the card of hope it's the card of healing it's the card of renewal and it's the card of giving back so if you look at what our elephant has done is he's picked up water and he's now blowing it out <laughs> through his nose through his trumpet and he's watering the ground and he's putting back so it's almost like he's taking from one source and sharing with so many others it is the card of healing it is the card of hope it's the card of renewal and the knight of wands is the one of like you know what let's just jump in and do it so i think this is saying let's not be so quick to jump in and get busy and get involved and get active until we've actually thought it through and until we've actually understood the request, the service, what it is that we that is being asked of us. Okay, so how can we best serve others with our work by being more mindful is what I'm getting with all of this. Now, with our temperance card, he's standing with one foot on the ground and one foot in the water. And our elephant is doing exactly the same. And when we do that, that whole act of one foot on land and one foot on water is again bringing about balance, bringing about renewal, and also about stability and structure. So, for the week ahead, the best way to serve others with your work, regardless of what your job is, regardless of what your job function is, your job title is, your industry, etc., is telling you to maybe slow down, don't be so quick to react and actually take the time to think about what it is that you're being asked, what it is that you're doing, what it is, how are you doing it? And is there a way to do it more mindfully? So I'm going to tell you that our Q&A with Spirit this week is encouraging you, welcoming you and inviting you to be more mindful and selective in what you do, when you do, how you do and who you do it with.
all right i love it okay so friends we have reached the end of your weekly reading i'm going to move on to the what's the word exclusive i don't know bonus reading bonus reading is the word i like to use for my motivated and activated channel members um, if you haven't already joined and you want to it's not too late you can just click the join button down below and do so um, so i'm going to carry on and move straight into their extended reading where we're going to understand a lot of this in a little bit more detail for the rest of you though i do hope that you have an amazing week a week full of magical confidence really absolutely full of magical confidence with love and blessings from my heart to yours and until we connect again take care